Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Create and today we're going to be doing score and jump height. Now forgive me, it's going to be a bit of a short one, I know it's been a while, but I hope to put more content out as soon as possible, so the content will be smaller for the time being. In the meantime, let's not waste any more time, I've said time about six times now. So we're going to create a new sprite, and not what I just did, and we're just going to call it SPR underscore coin. Hit the edit sprite button, go ahead and go up to the next check mark to create a new sprite, and we're just going to make width of 16, height of 16. We're going to go ahead and zoom in, and I'm just going to make a coin. Now, I've already got a color set to save some time, nice little circle, it's decent, it's good enough, it's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and go to our objects, we're going to create a new object, call it obj underscore coin, give it the coin sprite, and now we're going to add a new event for this, and we're going to add a step, step event. Go to the control tab on an object, and bring some code in, just drag her in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tell this coin if it collides with the player, it's going to make beautiful, beautiful score babies. About a hundred, I'd say. Yes, coins are on power thirst. Anyways, so we're going to make an if place meeting. And it's going to be x, y, obj, player. And then we're just going to run instance destroy. Now, instance destroy is an incredibly handy and at the same time incredibly frustrating command. What's handy about it here is that because it's in block quotes, we are guaranteeing that it will run all the way through these before it destroys the object. That is how instance destroy works in Game Maker, is that it's going to run this code and then destroy the object. So that means we can set something like I don't know, global dot p score to plus equal 100 babies. And we will just, it will just do it. It will plus equal 100. And then it will destroy it just after. So what this means is that we can do that without having to destroy every single object. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but there is actually a command called with. And what we can do is with object player we could do instance bah instance destroy now this works because there's only ever going to be one object player on the game and that's not even necessarily entirely true people have certainly done otherwise but in our particular game that would work on any enemy and that is totally acceptable because we only have one player on the screen at any time there's going to be many many coins in the game what that means is that if we ran that with the coins, rather than trying to figure out the coin that you just run into, it's going to attempt to destroy every single coin in existence. And it will succeed because it's pretty powerful. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and I'll place some coins down in our room. Now, we're going to go into Object Controller, go to the Create Event, add that in, and we're just going to add in our global.p score. Just make it equal to zero at start. Now, what we need to make sure is that our object controller is set to persistent. It should be. If it is not, make sure you check this. Otherwise, it will not work whatsoever. So it pretty much explains itself whether the object is persistent between rooms. It's also persistent between room restarts. So what this means is that if I restart a room using my R key, because I have that command here, you know, if I press the R key, room restart, then it's still going to have the score in there. We have to reset it manually, pretty much. So, the important thing to remember with that, then, is that that can be a good thing or a bad thing. There are certain games where it's more tedious to reset it manually. In our case, it's actually a good thing that we want to reset it manually because we want the player to be able to die and still have his score. He'll have lives, things like that. In the meantime, now that we have global.p score, we also need to display it. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to add event, a draw event, just a regular draw, and we're going to toss in some draw text code. Now in here, we're going to write view underscore x view zero 
plus 16 view underscore y view 0 plus 16 string global dot p score and then oh that's what's going wrong I accidentally put a period here there we go so this is going to draw our global variable for player score at the view plus 16 pixels on x and y axis. Now before I actually run the game, just to make sure I understand that, that means that a view needs to be active in the room for that to work. If a view is not active, it won't matter. I've actually recently changed my view so that includes 640 by 480 and the port on screen is identical as well. It doesn't matter what your viewport is as long as there's room for 16 pixels you can do this tactic. This will work. And the views are enabled, of course. So, we now have score, and if I go ahead and I run the game as it is, I can jump, do everything I want, and if I run through these coins, they get destroyed, and I just pick them up. So there we go, I just got 600 score. If I restart the room, I still have the score. However, if I close the game and run it again, I will not. So, that's basically the idea behind the persistence of the controller. Restarting the room will still keep your score. That's a good thing for us. That saves us some time. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add jump height. Now this is really, really simple. We're going to go into the step event of the object player. And we're going to go ahead. We're going to go to the vertical movement section. Just before finalize horizontal, I'd say, or just after. And I'm going to add jump height as a quote, and check if vispa is less than zero, and and key up rel vispa plus equals vispa divided by eight minus vispa times 0 0.6. Now this is just the equation I found best for my game. You're actually going to want to play around with it depending on the size of your room, the size of your objects. At 32 by 32 sprites, I found this to be the best for having a lot of accuracy and control with my player jump height. Now the thing is, I typed key up rel here. This is actually a variable we're checking to be true. We don't have that variable yet, so let's go ahead and create it. It's actually a control variable. So we're gonna just call it key up row. And I don't know if you might have guessed, but that just stands for keyboard check released. So we're just making sure it's the keyboard up key of the release of W. Not Q, W. Get out of here, Q. So what that means is that when we release this key, and our Vispa V speed is, oh, forgot to put an end block over there. And our V speed is less than zero, so that means that we are going up, then we will stop. So if I run this now, I can jump just a tiny bit, but I can also jump max height. And I can stop halfway, I can stop most of the way. I have a fair bit of control over my jump height. This isn't the perfect way to do things, but this is a decent jump height. You can plan it out, you can work out better ways to do jump height. Just play around with this and figure out what's best for you for now. In the meantime, I'll see you guys later. And in the comments below, go ahead and let me know what you want me to do next in the tutorial. Maybe I'll put it together sooner. <laughs>